I'm Ryoko Sawamura from Daichi Sankyo. Thank you very much for giving me the precious opportunity to make a presentation in this MIDD workshop. Today, I'd like to talk about QSP application to our COVID-19 vaccine clinical development. From later 2019, new coronavirus is still spreading all over the world. Rapid distribution of COVID-19 vaccines to the public at large is a world urgent need. And many COVID-19 vaccines are being developed now. I'd like to explain the mechanism of vaccine efficacy briefly. The efficacy of the vaccine is demonstrated by an immune system. After the vaccination, memory T cells and memory B cells are stimulated by a vaccine antigen, which are presented by dendritic cells or bind to B cell receptor. Antibody against vaccine antigen is formed by plasma cells and we are protected from the infection. Thus, immune response against vaccine antigen is a desired immunogenicity by a complex immune system. In the vaccine clinical development, it is essential to design the optimal dosage regimens. However, there are some challenges related to human immune response in dosage regimen selection of vaccine. First, traditional PKPD approach haven't been used for dosage regimen selection of vaccine because relationship between dose and immune response tend to be better shaped curve, and immune response after vaccination is complex, for example, booster effect. I will explain it later. Second, while vaccines are injected to various populations, such as older adults, children, different ethnic group, immune response is considered to be different in each special population. Third, there is a difficulty in translation of immune response between animals and humans. Therefore, we think dynamics of immune response in humans should be considered in dosage regimen selection of vaccine to challenge these difficulties. While there are some approaches for the dosage regimen selection, we think m and using QSP model, IG simulator, is an optimal approach. This QSP model for immunogenicity shown here was created by Dr. Chen et al. and it is a starting point of IG simulator. The QSP model for immunogenicity describes immune system related to passing immune response. In addition, key factors involved in dosage regimen selection of vaccine are also described in the QSP model. The affinity of T cell epitopes of the vaccine antigen to MHC class 2 is important in immune response. Since the epitope and its affinity can be predicted in silico based on the amino acid sequence, the affinity of T cell epitopes to MHC class 2 of not only our vaccine, but the other COVID-19 vaccines can be input to the QSP model. In addition, it is reported that there are ethnic differences in frequency of MHC class 2 allele and haplotype. Since there is the database of the frequency, the information collected from the database can be added to the QSP model, and ethnic differences in frequency of MHC class 2 allele and haplotype can be evaluated. Immune memory is an essential factor in duration of efficacy. A secondary exposure to a vaccine antigen triggers an immune response that is much more rapid 
and more vigorous than that seen with the first exposure by memory B cells. It is booster effect. In addition, antibodies with higher affinity for antigen increase during the course of an immune response. This affinity maturation and booster effect are also described in the QSP model. Therefore, QSP model for our COVID-19 vaccine candidate was developed based on IG simulator by adding information of our vaccine. After that, virtual clinical simulation was performed. In the analysis, we evaluated IgG level as an efficacy biomarker because it is being reported that there is a positive relationship between binding IgG and vaccine protection. In addition, QSP model was kept updated using the clinical data of the other vaccines of similar modality to increase the model credibility for younger and older adults. In the project of our COVID-19 vaccine, there were several questions related to immunology for our COVID-19 vaccine clinical development. For example, is the phase one design appropriate? Will the efficacy in Japanese be observed? Is the dose in younger adults sufficient for older adults? Will annual vaccination show sufficient efficacy? Will our vaccine candidate be efficacious, comparable with vaccines of the other companies? After injection of launched vaccines, should the dosing regimen be changed? First, these questions related to phase 1 study design were assessed using our vaccine QSP model. I'd like to talk about the assessment for the questions on the short-term efficacy and ethnicity. This is the initial phase 1 study design. The number of doses was three doses. The number of dosing was two times. Dosing interval was 28 days. Target race was Japanese. Target population was young healthy subjects and old healthy subjects. The condition of our phase 1 trial was input to the QSP model and the simulations were performed. In this slide, IgG level against the antigen at low dose, middle dose, and high dose are shown. IgG levels in young healthy Japanese subjects were predicted to be sufficient and almost similar to that in Caucasian. IgG levels increase in dose-dependent manner in the dose range of phase 1 study design. In addition, the duration of IgG level above the target IgG level also prolonged in dose-dependent manner. Therefore, the three doses were considered to be optimal in young Japanese subjects. Next question is about dosing interval. Which timing of second vaccination is appropriate for maximum efficacy? Here is the dosing interval of the other vaccines. CoronaVac was tested 14 days and 28 days. BNT162B1 or B2, uh, or vaccine developed by Pfizer, was 21 days. Messenger RNA 1273 or vaccine developed by Moderna was 28 days, and our vaccine was also 28 days. Shorter interval with high efficacy will be preferable from the viewpoint of emergency use and the protection of the infection spread. On the other hand, longer interval may be optimal for comparing rigid immune responses. The influence of dosing interval on IgG level after second vaccination or booster effect was evaluated using the QSP model. 
Maximum booster effect was predicted at the dosing interval of 21 days and 28 days. We could also evaluate the reason using the QSP model. Right figure shows memory B cell production after a single dose. From the simulation, it was suggested that number of memory B cell becomes maximum around 28 days after first vaccination. Therefore, 28 days were considered to be optimal. We could also predict booster effect of longer term dosing interval, for example, 84 days. Regarding the predictability of the longer term dosing interval, we think it is necessary to calibrate the QSP model using the actual data of the longer term dosing interval. Next question is about number of dosing. In general, two dosings were applied in the clinical study of COVID-19 vaccines. On the other hand, high immune response was observed by three dosings in the preclinical study. If sufficient efficacy is compared by two dosings, it is preferable from the viewpoint of supply of vaccine, emergency use, and the prevention of infection spread. Is there any difference between two dosings and three dosings? Left graph is the simulation result of IgG level after two dosings and three dosings. IgG level and the duration of efficacy after three dosings were higher and longer than those after two dosings. However, the duration of efficacy after two dosings was sufficiently long from the viewpoint of target efficacy. Therefore, when the balance between duration of efficacy and the other factors, such as vaccine supply, emergency use, and prevention of infection spread, two dosings was considered to be optimal. Next question is about immune response in older adults. It has been reported that immune responses in older adults drastically decrease compared with that in younger adults. In the clinical development of vaccine, insufficient response in older adults has been also reported. Thus, dosage regimen selection in older adults is essential in the vaccine clinical development. Therefore, characteristics of immune response in older adults were examined. It was reported that T cell function is impaired age dependently, though numbers of B cells and T cells don't change. These data were incorporated into our QSP model. The simulated IgG level time profiles in younger and older adults are shown in this slide. Left figure is IgG level at middle dose in younger adults. Middle figure is IgG level at high dose in younger adults. And right figure is IgG level at high dose in older adults. IgG level at high dose in older adults, right figure, was predicted to be lower than that at middle dose in younger adults, left figure. Since IgG level at middle dose in younger adults is target efficacy, much higher dose was considered to be needed in older adults. We discussed this simulation result and it triggered to add higher dosage than predicted in younger adults, highest, to our phase one study protocol. This is the summary of the assessment for our phase one design. The initial number of dosing and the dosing interval was considered to be optimal and we didn't need to add the other dosing regimens. Regarding the ethnic difference, it was predicted that 
efficacy will be observed in Japanese, similar to the Caucasian. The immune response in older adults was predicted to decrease compared with the younger adults. And the highest dose was added to the dosage in phase 1 study. In vaccine clinical trials, a variety of populations, type of vaccines, formulations, and dosage regimens should be explored. Since there are many combinations, it is impossible to implement all the arms in the clinical trial. However, trial simulation for all the combinations can be performed using vaccine QSP model, and optimal dosage regimens for the target populations can be predicted. MRDS using QSP model optimizes study design for vaccine and accelerates the clinical development. I'd like to summarize today's presentation. QSP model for our COVID-19 vaccine was created based on IG simulator to address our questions on the clinical development of the COVID-19 vaccine. The credibility of the vaccine QSP model was increased by calibration and validation using clinical data of the other vaccines. The phase one study design for our COVID-19 vaccine was optimized by the vaccine QSP model. Immune response in special population, such as different race, older adults, could be predicted using the vaccine QSP model. We think the vaccine QSP model supports acceleration of vaccine clinical development by optimizing the clinical study design. This work was performed by the cooperation with Satara members and supported by these my colleagues. I'd like to thank my collaborators for this work. Thank you very much for your attention.